Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one. Ah, weather, weather, sunshine, amazing. Thank you, Lord. All right. Amen. <laughs> Brother Letter. Praise the Lord for him giving my wife another year to celebrate her birthday. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good to us. Let's pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege of being in your house tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be singing as we go along life's road. Uh, sometimes the way gets difficult, but Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you do for us, all you've done for us. Thank you most of all for your death for us at Calvary. And Lord, the fact that you didn't stay in that grave, you rose victorious. And Lord, I pray that there be any among us tonight that uh, don't understand or have yet to receive the gospel, that they would have understanding and receive you. Lord, many of us do know you, and Lord, I pray we'd be challenged uh, from the preaching of your word and make the appropriate application as you would desire. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated, and we'll enjoy a special from our choir.
right, good evening. We have another performance for you this evening, and this month our uh, theme was uh, keeping keeping the faith, um, what to do and how to recognize it when uh, when you start to, to lose faith or stay, get out of the habit of uh, being near the Lord. And I thought it was very fitting because we're getting ready to go into revival, so uh, God doesn't... Uh, it's not just a coincidence, right? God, God did that on purpose. Um, but one of the things I wanted to share with you that I thought was especially interesting um, is uh, out of Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And this talks about the end days, as many of you know. It says, this, uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For our sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Isn't that so true? I got to talk to the children about uh, public schools versus private schools. And none of them could give me an opinion on a public school because they'd never been. But you look at our highest levels of learning, our highest in institutions these days, and I, I, I wouldn't send my children to Yale or Harvard if it were free. Um, what they're doing to kids uh, just is, is not right. The ideas that they put into them. They're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so I talk to the children, right, and they're so young, um, about you know, what they see in the world and, and if they see examples of this. And, and um, they, they come here, so they don't get to see a lot of that. Uh, but I grew up in public school, and, um, and if, if you've looked around the world, you've seen this, and this is over increasing more and more. And you know, the, the, the Trump may sound, and we may get called out of here before I finish, um, or we might have hundreds and thousands of years to go. I don't know, but I know we're definitely closer to this than we were when I was a kid. Um, but here's the silver lining. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Isn't that amazing? Here are the children. I didn't grow up like this. But here they are. They grew up like this. Right? This, is, this just was so overwhelmingly amazing to me, valuable. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And we talked about the perfection it's speaking of there, right? And that's perfection uh, by um, position, positional perfection, right? So you can be perfect in the position of Christ if you're saved. God looks at you, he doesn't see anything. Yeah. But these children have grown up with the word. They've memorized more Bible than I learned in the first 10 years as a Christian. And, and, and they're just in grade school. How amazing is that? Yeah. It's such a blessing. And as we go through... As they've learned about faith, how to keep the faith, the focus in the scripture here, it brings us right back to the word of God, right? So how do you keep the faith? What do you do when you feel like you're getting cold, when you feel like the world's affecting you? And I'm here to tell you, tomorrow's tax day. I've been doing taxes for two days. <laughs> I'm talking to myself right now because it's been painful. But um, praise the Lord, right? I'm here with you all. You all are here with me, and we're here in God's house. And they're going to do a wonderful skit, and we can put faith in the word of God looking at these children, that these might be the ones, these might be the ones when they're grown, that the scripture is talking about, right? The ones that God put holy scriptures in to make them wise, right? Even as they were children, they've known since they were children. So, uh, without any more of my rambling, let's go ahead and have the one up. I tell you what, I don't know about you guys, I've just been really cold lately with all this 
wind or whatever. Eh, no big deal. I'll brave the wind in sub-zero temperatures any day. As long as you give me a good coat and my lucky scarf. Nothing can phase me if I have those. I never enjoy the cold weather by just looking out the window. There's nothing like some hot sun and cocoa by the warm fire and some homemade fresh cookies. I guess I like to be warm from the inside out. That's not fair. I was talking about the weather and you changed the subject to food. <laughs> Though it is comforting, something that warms the inside on cold days. Yeah, and that's how it's supposed to be with our fish and rice. When God first saves us, we were warmed by the gospel, but we have to keep seeking God so the fire continues to burn in our hearts. I guess there are times in every Christian's life when they need to be renewed. Even David, a man after God's own heart, had to ask God to forgive his sin and to renew his heart. It's for sure that David had to ask God to warm his heart, then I need to ask God to keep mine from becoming cold. ministry of noticing some of those kids uh, you know if, if those pins they have on their hat are very heavy they're gonna have chiropractor issues in the, in the future they're, they're getting loaded up that's that's wonderful I'm grateful for that for the, the our children's ministries all of them and, and for the patch ministry in particular this evening all right just a few quick things here before we receive our offering tonight um, First of all, ladies, remember Bible study tomorrow night at 6.30, tomorrow night at 6.30, and then uh, Wednesday night, of course, our outreach at 5.45 church, 
and evening service at 7 o'clock. We're continuing in our series through the book of Revelation, and uh, I'm uh, really enjoying it. I hope that uh, most of you are as well, and uh, we're, we're gleaning some truth from God's Word, and it's challenging challenging to us. I'm sure grateful for, <clears throat> for uh, redemption. Amen. We think about the judgment to come, and grateful for redemption. The teen... Big Dragons game is this Saturday, and so teens, if you're meeting here at the church uh, to, to meet at, to go to the ball game, you'll be here at 12:20, and they should return about 4 or 4:30. Parents, so be mindful of that. There are still some tickets available in our seating section. They're seven dollars a piece. They're on the first base uh, uh, side, and so if you're interested in that, you can see Pastor Brent about that. He can get you your paper ticket, so you don't necessarily have to travel with our group, but you can meet meet the group there. And then also, again, remember that the, the uh, Dragons Park has been cashless for a few years, so uh, you'll need to, if you don't have a debit card or something like that, if your youngster doesn't, they'll need to purchase one of those in, in the park. They can get, get one of those or bum off a buddy and, and barter that way, however that may, may work best for you, but just a heads up about that. And then, of course, we're excited about our spring revival meeting. It's just around the corner, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, we'll begin on Sunday. We'll have Evangelist Rich Tozier with us all day Sunday. And then uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, we'll have Pastor Tim Rader will be preaching for us. And uh, both these men are, are uh, good preachers and uh, been greatly used of the Lord. And I'm sure they'll be blessed to our church. Let me encourage you to do uh, a couple things here about relative to the revival meeting, if I can. Uh, prioritize the revival. We are so quick to criticize all that's wrong in our society. And I'm not saying we're, we're not being equitable in our criticism, but we need to be instruments that facilitate the solution and not just instruments that are experts at criticizing. Good. Right? Anybody can identify where there's a problem. We need people that can fix the problem yeah. or people that can take us to the person who can fix the problem. We know that's the Lord. And so prioritize revival. I just give you three, three thoughts, same letters to begin each, all right? Uh, pray for the revival. Yeah. Would you do that? We can do that for the next two weeks. Plan to participate. So pray for it. Plan to be here. And when you're here, participate. Uh, maybe another word for that would be plug in. Let's, let's do that. So it's just two weeks away. Hope you'll plan to be here for all of it that you can be. If you can't be here every night, be here for what you can be. And, and again, uh, be praying, praying about the meeting. All right, while well, our ushers come, receive our offering tonight. While we're in that season of the year around here, we had furnaces running this morning, and the AC's running tonight. So there you go. If your head's not stuffed up, just wait, right? There you go. So hopefully not. Hopefully not. All right. Uh, Dustin, yes, Lord, blessing on the offering tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for being able to come and be in your house tonight, Lord. Please uh, bless the revival. Please help those who have work to be able to get off. Lord, and please help us to listen with open hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Genesis chapter 8 in your Bible, book of Genesis, the 8th chapter. You know, Christian songs are a blessing in many ways. Some, sometimes they take you back to places too. You know, places where you were, you hear them. and they. You know. When my wife and I first came here, uh, uh, a man named Paul Douglas led the, led the singing in the choir a hundred years ago. And our first uh, assistant pastor was a man named Mark Bullock. He was my, my pastor's son, and he was educated in music. And so he took the choir, and one of his favorite songs was the one that was played for the offertory because he, uh, the choir sang that, I don't know how many times, but they sang it often. So things take you back, and they're good things, uh, not bad things. Genesis chapter 8 in your Bible, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, to the Lord. And uh, Genesis 8, if you're able, would you stand with me? We're going to read the chapter tonight. And uh, Genesis 8, verse number 1, And God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, the waters assaged, the fountains also of the deep, the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated, and the ark rested in the seventh month, the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Iraq. It's always amazed me how precise God is with dates. <coughs> this exact day, it wasn't just a surprise to God when the, when the ark rested in the mountains. Uh, it might have been a surprise to Noah and his family. It was no surprise to God. God knows where we are. He knows what day it is. He knows what we need. And he loves us, as he did Noah. <coughs> And the waters, verse 5, and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th the month, the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the, windows of the uh, window of the ark, uh, which he had made, and sent forth a raven, which went uh, forth uh, to and fro until the waters were dried up uh, from the earth. He also sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground, and the dove found no rest uh, for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth, and then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days. Again, he sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came unto him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the 600th uh, and first year, the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second, in the second month, on the seventh day, the twelfth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou, thy wife, thy sons, thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, and all flesh both fowl and cattle, the creeping thing every, that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, the fowl, uh, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar, and smelled, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of his heart is evil from his youth. We have a problem, don't we? It's called a sin nature. Uh, 
I'm thankful God knows it and he still loves us. <clears throat> Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Say, preacher, what about global warming? <coughs> While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Say, well, you don't believe that. No, I don't. And do I think climate climate's change? I think they always have. And uh, we, ought to, we ought to pay attention to the truth. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Not my message tonight. I just had to throw that in. Let's pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for the word of God. May, as we look at... Uh, Noah, uh, our brother in Christ, we see how you cared for him and his family. May we realize and recognize how you care for us, how you love us beyond that we can imagine. And uh, Lord, may we serve you in such a way to be pleasing in your sight as Noah did. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Noah and his family have passed through the judgment of God unscathed. Uh, they refused to go the way of the world. Uh, they refused and separated themselves unto God, and God protected them. By the way, God didn't protect them because of what they did. He protected them by his grace, and that's, that's, that helped them to do what they did. It's not the other way around. Uh, we don't earn grace. Grace is given to us by faith. Amen. And uh, we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they did separate themselves from a generation uh, that had, as, as I've mentioned, uh, probably three or four times, they would have watched, the, Noah would have watched his brothers and sisters, his aunts and uncles, his cousins, uh, many of his relatives. All of those people would have perished in the flood. Uh, as, as we mentioned, Adam, uh, Adam would have uh, only died uh, uh, as uh, Noah's dad would have been, 40 or 50 years old when Adam died. And then, and then you see that godly generation uh, that rose up uh, and how God blessed and blessed and blessed and then people began to become unseparated. People began to become unseparated and they left the relationship with the Lord embraced a dying world and the world was judged but Noah continued to walk with the Lord I hope we continue to walk with God the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 40 New Testament save yourselves from this untoward generation that word untoward means perverse we live in days that are almost unbelievably perverse. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, said in Jeremiah 6.15, uh, uh, where they were not ashamed, when they, <coughs> when they uh, committed abomination, they were not ashamed, neither could they blush. Boy, we're living in days like that, aren't we? I mean... When I, was, uh, when I was a young pastor, I can remember knocking on doors. It wasn't that there wasn't any sin. <laughs> sin was just as bad then as it is now. But people blushed. People were ashamed. People aren't ashamed of anything now. As a matter of fact, they're emboldened in their perverseness. Uh, and uh, and we're, it offends God. But Noah... By the grace of God, escaped the judgment of God in, in an ark. And the ark, in many ways, pictures Jesus Christ. We escape the judgment of God in Jesus Christ. And so that ark pictured uh, our, our Lord Jesus Christ and the faith that we put in him. I want you to notice a few things tonight about, <clears throat> about the, uh, this, uh, these, these days with Noah. I want you to notice, first of all, in verse number 1 of chapter 8, I want you to notice God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters of saves. 
I want you to notice for Noah, this was a time of silence. You say, well, he wasn't talking to his wife. No, that's not what I'm talking about. God wasn't talking to him. As a matter of fact, God hadn't talked to him in a long time. Noah and his family were in the ark over a year before God instructed them to leave. So he, he and his family are in this ark, and they have no voice from God. God's not, God's not uh, speaking to them on a daily basis. By the way, the silence of God isn't evidence of his absence. Say, so, well, God's not talking to me about something. Well, Noah's going to show us here, I believe, he's going to outline for us what we should do when we think God's silent. You know, I hear a lot of people, I believe this is the will of God for my life. Well, yeah, you can know what God's will is for your life. But don't assume something God is God's will. Uh, because You know, this happens, it must be God's will. Let God give you peace in your heart about what he wants you to do. Don't look for goofy things to happen and assign that to me. Oh, this is God's will for my life. You ought to know and walk confidently in the will of God in this life. And Noah outlines for us what to do when God is silent. You know, there have been times in my life that I wasn't sure what to do. And some of those times, I did the wrong thing. I didn't, I didn't say a wicked thing. I said a thing that wasn't God's will. You can, God wants you to know what He wants you to do. That's not just for young people. God wants you to know what he wants you to do. Do you think God is capable of instructing you? Yeah. Noah's going to show us how to do that, I believe, as we, we look at this. <clears throat> what do you do when God is silent? Realize God is still working. God is still doing something. The Bible, <clears throat> the Bible says here uh, that God remembered Noah. That doesn't mean God forgot about Noah. It means God specifically began to do things uh, to show Noah that he was still working on his behalf. You say, well, he didn't speak to Noah. But look at what God was doing. You see, if we're going to know God's will, we've got to identify the hand of God in our life for us. Notice what, uh, what it says here. Uh, God was silent, but God was working. <clears throat> and, and even though Noah wasn't informed, listen to it again. Uh, verse number 8, <clears throat> uh, verse number 1, God remembered Noah and every living uh, thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind. Who made a wind? Why did he do that? Because the Bible says God remembered Noah. So who did he do it for? Noah and his family. God was, God was silent, but God was still working on Noah's behalf. The Bible says in verse 2, the, the fountains of the deep uh, stopped uh, uh, gushing forth, and the, and the rain ceased. God was working for Noah. The Bible says in, in verse number 4, the ark rested. God was working for Noah. The Bible says in verse 5, land was visible. They could see the mountains. Can you imagine being on that ark for, for a year and the thing finally settles on the, on the earth and you feel it uh, bump, 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 and all of a sudden uh, it's, on, it's on dry land and then one day you look out, hey, there is dry land. I can see it. What a blessing that would have been to Noah and his family. You see, God was working <clears throat> on their behalf even though he wasn't speaking to them verbally. What does Noah do in that silence? Well, the Bible tells us he's seeking God's will. 
What do you mean? He's trying to figure out what God wants him to do. That's exactly what God wanted him to do, I believe. God wanted Noah to try to figure out what his next step was. By the way, God's going to speak to him, amen? But what Noah's not just sitting in the boat. <coughs> uh, what was those guys on Hee Haw? You know, they're sitting there and laid on the couch, you know, and on the porch, you know, and they didn't move. Uh, he's not just sitting there doing nothing. <coughs> that's, the way, that's the way a lot of our, us are sometimes. But what are you doing for the Lord? Well, I'm just waiting for God to do something. You ought to be trying to figure out what God wants you to do. I just lay around, wait for God to, uh, to paint something in the clouds so you can figure out what he wants you to do. You ought to be trying to figure out what the Lord wants you to do. He was seeking for God's will. And <clears throat> Notice what it says in verse number 10 of chapter 8. <clears throat> it says, and he stayed yet another seven days. Well, what's he doing? He's trying to figure out his next step. By the way, he did leave. He stayed. Then, then notice verse 12. What's he doing in verse 12? Uh, he stayed yet another seven days. You say, well, preacher, he's not doing anything. Yes, he is. He, he's trying to figure out. He, he's releasing some birds. He's trying to figure out what God wants him to do. And he used what he had to try to discern the Lord's will. And... Uh, the Bible says, seek me and you shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And that tells us that when we don't know God's will, God will reveal his will to us when from our hearts we're searching for his will. I'm sure no one wanted to get off that ship. One thing I don't like to be is cooped up. People say, well, preacher, you like it where it snows. I don't stay inside. So you must like the cold. No, I like to be warm. I dress for it. I like it outside. I love the snow. I think it's beautiful. Not this time of year. Uh, I don't like, no one likes being cold. We just heard about that. And the, and the patch kids. We like being, and by the way, we like hot chocolate too, don't we? You come in from outside, you get something warm, and your tummy, tum tum, and it tastes so goody, good, good. Uh, yeah, I think Noah was saying, "Let me out of this place. Let me off this." Imagine what it smelled like in there. We're not going that direction. <clears throat> so, what did Noah do? Well, this wasn't written yet, but I believe Noah knew it because he walked with God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So are, are you catching this? Noah just didn't run and get ahead of God. He waited upon the Lord, but he was trying to discern the Lord's will. That's so important for us. We can discern God's will. When you say, what, if I don't know what God wants me to do, what should I do? Keep doing what you know God wants you to do every day. And God will show you the next step. Amen, preacher. We say, that's not important. It is important. Some, some of us in here make decisions that change our lives completely, and we, we really have decided it by a financial or a comfortable position for us. I think that offends God. I believe God wants us to know his will in our lives. So, oh, preacher, you just, you just don't think anybody should ever do this or ever do that. No, I think we ought to all be in God's will. You know, some people leave the church and it's God's will. Did you know that? Uh, it's not God's will. The pastor doesn't see it that way. <coughs> I never saw it that way. You're leaving the church. Are you kidding me? This is the best church in the world. What's wrong with you? That can't be God's will. Sometimes it is. But you need to know the will of God. And by the way, when you know it, 
Everybody else will get it. But don't try to make up a story that makes God's will for your life. Wait upon the Lord. Seek what his will is for your life. When God's silent, don't go on until you get direction. That's exactly what Noah did. <clears throat> Notice with me. Verse 15. <clears throat> and God spake unto Noah, saying, well, I bet that was good to hear. Say, well, I wish God would speak to me. He will. Say, well, we don't have what Noah had. No, we've got more. We've got 66 books, the Word of God. And by the way, the Spirit of God can take the Word of God and speak to a child of God. He can do that. He's amazing, and he loves us. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> uh, again, back, uh, back verse 15. And God spake to Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, <clears throat> wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living creature that, that is with thee, and all uh, flesh, both fowl of the air and cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, <clears throat> that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. <clears throat> okay? Uh, uh, Noah's faith in God had caused him to build the ark. Noah, going through this judgment that God had brought upon the earth, now he's made it through. He's waited upon God. God has given him instruction. He's in the will of God, and God says, go forth. You say, well, uh, preacher, what's the big deal about that statement? He didn't say go back. Forward. Always forward for God. You know, Peter tried it. You remember Peter? We talked about him a couple weeks ago. After the resurrection of Christ, he... Peter got all, I think, frustrated with life, uh, and he, uh, he had, <coughs> life wasn't going the way he planned. You ever have that? You ever have when life's not going the way you plan? Hello. Do you know that's a good thing? How can that be a good thing? Because it's going the way God planned. Get connected with God's plan for your life. That's wonderful. By the way, God never fails. Be on the right team. You're not, you're not going to fail. So God spake to Noah, and he said, go forth in the ark. Go forth. Always forward. Always forward. Always forward. Peter had to get to realize it. He couldn't go back to what he did once. He had to go forward, and the only way forward was with Christ. He's a child of God. He is saved. He was birthed into the family of God. He knew the Lord. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to read a passage for you out of Exodus. Remember when Moses went into Egypt and God had instructed him and he went in and all the plagues, the, the frogs and the blood and the uh, all the, I mean, there was cooties everywhere. I mean, it was just a mess. And then you remember the uh, the Passover and how God had, uh, had delivered the children of Israel and, and all of these things were not only a curse to the Egyptians uh, they were they were faith builders to the Israelites we sometimes look at it well God's judging the Egyptians he was but these things also should have built the faith of Israel to know that God was doing all these things on their behalf and so, <clears throat> finally, Moses says, all right, it's time to go. So they pack up everything. Remember, they spoiled the Egyptians. They took all their goodies. And the Egyptians said, get out of here. Take whatever you want. We just want you to leave. And so, <clears throat> all these Israelites uh, leave and finally get away. And God leads them to a place. Where there's no place to go. 
life. God leads him to a place where there's no way out. <coughs> Are you listening? God led them in his will to a place where there was no way out. But God. See, he's the way forward. Let, let, me, let me read it for a bit. But, but Israel reacted <coughs> all wrong uh, uh, to the Lord there in Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 10. <clears throat> the Bible says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us uh, to carry us out of Egypt? Is not, <clears throat> is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. By the way, it's better to die. What? What happens when a believer dies? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. The problem was they didn't have any faith. They should have had faith. <clears throat> Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still. That's an amazing statement. And see the salvation of the Lord. See, they needed to get their eyes on God. <coughs> uh, look, if, you, if you're seeking God's will and God's silent to him, keep seeking him. And when he shows you what to do, it's going to require faith to do what you're supposed to do. But keep going forward. Don't try to go backward. Don't try to go back into the world. Go forward for God, whatever that is. No, we don't know what that is. God might take somebody like Will Marshall. He's doing, he's doing a good job back there in Patch, isn't he? Suppose God calls him to preach. We don't want that to happen. Who's going to do Patch? <laughs> Say, well, he's too old. He's retired Air Force. You're right, he is too old. These old guys. How old are you, Will? 44. Yeah. <laughs> Over the hill. I'm not trying to be the Holy Spirit and tell you what you need to be doing. You, uh, but uh, sometimes we exclude ourselves when we ought to include. Go forward is what I'm saying. Go forth. And then <clears throat> I use a term. This is my term. Grow forth, verse 17. God told Noah, bring forth. <clears throat> you know, my wife will say this to me often. God has blessed us so richly. Sometimes I wake up and I just, I, I am overwhelmed at God's goodness in my life. Why is that? Because God's good. He can't be anything else. Well, he's bad to me. Not God. He's good. Every good thing, every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He, he, he loves you. And he'll do you good. Walk with him. Bring forth. Bring forth. Well, what does that mean? That means do what you're supposed to do, obey God like Noah did, and then bring forth. Some, to some of us, that's winning souls to Christ. Some of us, that's our, our, our offerings and our giving. It's just doing what God wants you to do. It's to some of us, you know, one of the greatest things you can do is be faithful to the house of God. We're gonna, that's in the next point. They say, well, what's the big deal about that? You encourage somebody. You know what you do when you don't come? You discourage somebody. I'm not saying everybody needs to be in every service. I'm not saying that I'm not a legalist uh, in the sense that if you're not here, you're not right with God. No. Uh, but if you can be, you should be. We're having revival. <coughs> Don't set it aside. I'm going to be here for revival. What our country needs, it doesn't. I need it. 
I want to hear from God. I'm going to pray that way. God wants to speak to my heart. You know, it's real easy. Here, here's something we do. I'm hurrying on. Here's something we do. And when the preaching comes, that was good. They needed that. Yes, they did. We all do. Say, so, well, they, uh, the world really needs revival. Well, draw a circle and jump in it. You're the guy that needs it the most. That's right. Grow. Fourth, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What a blessing it is that God commands us to bring forth. You say, well, he's commanded me to bring forth? Yes. Each of us are commanded to preach the gospel to every creature. To sow the seed. To trust God for the increase. <clears throat> we have gotten professional. We think that that's up to pastors. Well, who is the pastor? Or the missionary, if you want to. Since Brother Todd, too, will I'm trying to pick on you about something. I can't think of a thing. It's frustrating. Well, pastor's an under shepherd. That's that's what the role is. That's that's a description. Shepherds don't have sheep. Sheep have sheep. Amen. And he he is also a sheep, so he's responsible to win people just like I am, just like you are. Uh, the pastor's responsible to do the work of evangelism. That means he needs to be winning people to Christ. We need to, we need to bear fruit. Well, what is that fruit? It's the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. And all our life ought to be wound up in winning others to Christ. And it isn't how many. It's God. what's God's will. I can reach somebody. God can use me. God can use you to win somebody that no one else can. And, uh, to me, that's a blessing. Let's notice lastly, verse number 20. <clears throat> i got to get back. Exodus doesn't read the same way as Genesis. <clears throat> verse number 20. And Noah built an ark unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. <clears throat> it's a time of worship. It's a time of worship. Somebody said to me yesterday, <coughs> Brother Todd and I were out, <clears throat> we were out, uh, we stopped over to Dave Marie Roach to see how Dave was doing because he'd been in the hospital soon. I like harassing people. I just enjoy it. I always have. And we stopped over to see him, and they were commenting about how they they wanted to see the rest of their family get in church. I said, Brother Dave, one of the problems why people get out of church is they come to church to come to church. They don't come to church to worship God. Why are you here? Well, preacher, I'm supposed to be here. That won't keep you here. By the way, you won't have any trouble singing if you come to worship God. You'll be looking for what God wants you to do if you come to worship God. You won't say how long does a sermon last if you come to worship God. Because you're listening. You're participating. You're a part of it. It's not just going to church. It's going to meet with God. Are, are you listening? That's the most important thing you can do in your life. Oh, I love it when I'm in the service and God speaks to my heart. It touches my very soul. First thing Noah did, the 
first thing he did. Are you listening? He built an altar. But what's that? A place of worship. You know what the church is? The pillar and ground of truth. A place. It's not this. It's us. Of worship. Say it again. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. But why are you here? If you came to hear a good message, I'm sorry. It's just me. If you came to hear from God, He can use one of the kids that spoke up here just as well as He can use me. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, Thou hast ordained strength. Amen. Come to worship God. You won't be looking at your cell phone if you come to worship God. Hello! We quench the spirit of God in the services because we're not, we're, 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 we expect to be entertained. Man, I, I, I like entertainment. Can you be entertained in church? Sure. But that's not why we're here. We're here to hear from heaven. And the amazing thing is God wants us to hear her. A place of worship. Why is that important? Noah, listen, listen, listen. Noah was a person, a man, a family man, a, a, a husband, a dad, just like you are. Or just like you will be. And his wife was there. What did they want? What was his first thought? What would my first thought? I asked myself. You ask yourself, what would your first thought be? Build a house. It's going to rain again. Got to protect my family. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's good. Well, we've got to provide. We've got what are we going to eat? We got to provide. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good thing. I think some of us would have got off and just celebrated. Man, we we need to have a fellowship and enjoy this. Let's just get together and, and look at that olive tree over there. Isn't this amazing? Look. It's not going like this anymore. This is wonderful. That would be a good thing. Noah didn't think of himself. Nor his family nor his family. <coughs> but God, first and foremost. And look at his sacrifice. This is also amazing. I don't see any instruction of God. Get off the ark. And I want you to sacrifice of every clean thing you took with you. I don't see instruction like that. I think he could have got off the ark and sacrificed one lamb. Let's get on with life, man. I got things to do. That kind of sounds like what I would have done. I got to build a pole barn, man. I got a place to put my tractors in. I got things to do. Maybe you're like that. Maybe your housewife, I want to get the kitchen set up. They didn't have any kitchen, they didn't have any sink, they didn't have anything. They had God. And he took of every clean animal. Every one. Every kind of clean animal. And sacrificed it unto God. Do you know how much time that would have taken? They had no house. All they had was an altar and their family. Is that all they had? <coughs> Ryan smiling. They had God. <coughs> you ever think, you ever think, <coughs> you ever think, what if I lost everything? 
or think that way, Grant, or think, what if I lost it? I think that way sometimes, Brother Todd. You can't. Because we're kept by God. You can't lose everything. Because he is everything. Oh, you say, well, you mean I couldn't lose my house? That's not everything. He sacrificed much. As much as possible. That's the way I want to be. Everything's full. Well, let's see here. I need $105. That means I need to tithe. A dollar? No. Ten dollars. And a nickel. Yeah. No. Is it ten dollars and a nickel? Help me out, Titus. 10.50. No. 10% of a dollar? Did I say $5? It is 10.50. You're right. I'm sorry. So I need to put, I need to put 10.50 in. We'll get it. We're not good at math. Randy should have helped us out. He's back there. We don't want that. We want you to help. $10.50. Well, that's all I have to give. Well, you didn't give anything. You just tithe. That wasn't Noah. Are you listening? I'm almost through. He said, how much can I give? You say, well, preacher, you're talking about money. I'm really not. I'm really not. I'm just using it as an illustration. I'm talking about our lives. How much can I give? What is that? That's finding the will of God and doing it. How much can I give? Is he worthy? He's worthy of all. The pastor's been preaching a lot about the gospel of Christ. It is everything. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have anything. You're going to hell. Jesus Christ came into this whole world so you and I could be saved. So we could know beyond a shadow of a doubt, according to the word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, that we belong to God. What a treasure that is. <coughs> and if you know him tonight, he's worthy of your worship. Now sometimes, listen, we live in this Feely generation. My wife and I watched a kind of special deal on Margaret Thatcher. Uh, the, used to be the whatever it was in Great Britain. One of the things she said is, I don't live by my feelings. I want to do something. I thought, hoorah. <laughs> I want to do something. Now, you say, Chris, you always feel like going to church, but no, I feel like praising God when I get here. Because he's worthy that you worship. Time of silence. Are you in one of those? Lord, I'm not sure. I haven't heard from you. I'm not sure what, what you want me to do. God knows all about it. He's working on your behalf. He's working on your behalf. But I haven't heard from him. You will. You'll hear. And by the way, when he answers, be better than your ideas. Just keep seeking his will. What do you do next? When God tells you what to do, obey him. You say, well, it's, it's too much for me. No. If God goes with me, I can go. That's not too much. Obey him. And then worship him. The Savior. God, our creator. My Lord. be wonderful. You see what God did to Noah's sacrifice? It was sweet unto the Lord. It touched God's heart. Just listen and I'm through. 
Wouldn't you like your life to touch God's heart? You say, well, that's the Old Testament. Stephen's life touched God's heart. When he was being stoned to death, the Bible says the Lord stood up, recognized him. His voice shone as an angel. He gave up the ghost. See, people down here thought they destroyed the enemy. <coughs> Stephen looked up and God took him home. Home. Worship the Lord. We're going to sing an invitation song in just a moment. Don't, don't quit on me. But it's, <coughs> I'd, like, I'd like us to sing page 869. Brethren, we have meant to worship. That's why we're here, Amen. I'm going to pray in just a moment. Would you bow your heads with me? Just for a moment. I just don't give this kind of invitation. But perhaps you're here tonight and you feel like God's silent. You're not hearing his voice. Say, preacher, would you pray for me? I, I'm seeking God's direction. I'm not sure what to do. And I want to know what God wants me to do. Would you, my prayer is just a prayer, just to the Lord. Would you just lift your hand up and say, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you and you. God bless your heart. Thank you for your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. I'm going to pray in just a moment. Thank you. I saw that too. Perhaps you're here tonight and God has shown you what to do and you need faith to obey him. That's how you obey him, by faith. encourage you to obey the Lord. And then may you and I meet to worship him. He is worthy to be worshipped. Our Heavenly Father, I, I pray for these that lifted their hands tonight, searching for your will in their lives, and I pray that would be revealed to them. And then when it is, that they would glorify your name, that they'd obey your voice and worship you you should be. Then, Heavenly Father, I pray if there's somebody here tonight without Christ, someone outside of your family, someone who's never been saved, I pray tonight that they'd see there's a difference in this place, and it's not, not just the, the difference that people make, but it's your presence. I pray they'd be convicted of their sin, realize they need you as Savior. I pray you bless invitation. Pray be blessed in Jesus' name. If folks need to come and make decisions that I've been saying <coughs> about, Lord, may we meet with you at the altar tonight. I pray in Jesus' name.